Love is the river that flows through, and love never fails you. Someone say amen. amen. I heard this song before, but then I kind of had an experience two Saturdays, Saturdays ago. Thank you to everyone who joins us on Zoom right now for our prayer time every Saturday at 8.30 a.m. It's a really good time. And if you're at all curious and want to check it out sometime, uh, no judgment, no expectation that you say anything out loud, please join us on a Saturday morning at 8.30 on Zoom. But um, it struck me as we were praying that there's been no time in the 16 years I've had the privilege of serving as an ordained pastor. Actually, my ordination anniversary was yesterday, so it's officially 16 years. I look a little younger than that, right? Just kidding. There's not been a time that I can remember when people's pain level is so high. Can I get an amen? I mean, we are just getting wrenched by this pandemic thing. I mean, it's been two years, right? People are hurting. And yeah, here's a joke I saw on the internet. New math. There are three kids. One kid was exposed to COVID on Monday. Two kids are vaccinated. One kid got symptoms on Wednesday. One kid got symptoms on Thursday. And one doesn't have symptoms yet. Two kids have Zoom school. How many days should the parents leave the kids alone to go on vacation? I mean, it's just been nuts right now. And I want to give God praise for Pilgrim Lutheran School, who has found a way to stay open for in-person learning. Yes, let's give God praise. That has been no small feat. But, I mean, if it's not COVID, it's some other challenge, physical or mental or emotional or spiritual. And as we were praying, as we do every week, but no, go back for a second. Pain level. Yep. Um, I was beginning to feel quite burdened as we were praying for all the sick and all the problems. And it doesn't happen every time we're in prayer and every time I'm in prayer, but I got a vision. And I saw this liquid rising underground, something like the water table, but it wasn't water. The liquid seemed to represent pain. It just was rising and rising and rising, and it was getting close to the surface. And it didn't look good, right? If the pain left untended to, unchecked, unprocessed, would rise to the surface, I mean, things could get even worse. But then we, I was praying, I heard everyone praying, me, around me. For those on our prayer list, we do pray for every single person. On the recent and immediate, we work through the ongoing prayers every Saturday morning. For families who are mourning, for our church, for our school, for our students, for our youth, for our seniors, for our staff, for our global partners in places like South Africa and El Salvador. For those recovering from COVID and other ailments. And I was starting to feel a little <laughs> burdened with all of this. But then the vision came back to me and I saw these rivers. Now you can go to the next slide. These rivers running along the surface. So this is the same liquid that was coming up from the earth. It was this water running along the surface. And the Holy Spirit seemed to suggest to me that this wasn't a destructive church current. This is a, was a restorative current. It was the waters of baptism with the power of the Holy Spirit. And as the water that was running along the surface started to seep into the earth, it intermingled with, I don't know what it was called, pain liquid, let's call it. I mean, it, and, and it, it formed this new, powerful, glistening substance it wasn't water, it wasn't pain, it was something new. And then I could tell that with this new liquid, the earth was being restored. Somehow this new liquid was sustenance, it was nutrients, it was, as I've heard a preacher say, like manure, like it was this, this, this wonderful growth substance for the earth and healing was underway. This vision really touched me, and it reminded me of that song, Love is the river that flows through, 
Love never fails you. So turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, love never fails. These waters are here to remind us that God, love is real. It is present. It is falling upon us just as freshly as Paul's word almost 2,000 years ago. And even our hurts, even our pains can be used by the Holy Spirit of God to remind us that we need God. And we need each other. I mean, this pandemic is many things, right? It's had economic impacts, social impacts, healthcare impacts, church impacts, education impacts. But one of the things that it is, is a crucible. It's an intense time of testing. And the first definition in the dictionary for a crucible is the scientific, where you mix whatever. I'm not a scientist, I'm sorry. I've got to turn to some of the other scientists in this room. Uh, Clay, Wes, help me out. But Webster's Dictionary's second definition, and you're already looking at it on the screen, a situation of severe trial, or in which different elements interact, leading to the creation of something new. So now we actually enter the context in which 1 Corinthians 13 was written by the Apostle Paul. Just like we hear Psalm 23 at funerals, we often hear 1 Corinthians 13 at weddings and at works, right? Who had 1 Corinthians 13 read at your wedding if you're married? Yeah, see? I mean, it's really, really awesome to read at a wedding. And yet, it wasn't written for a wedding. It was written for a community a community that was facing many challenges and yet had a calling to receive love and to share love with the world. Let me say that again. Though they were facing many challenges, they still had the opportunity to receive love and share love with the world. I mean, put yourself in first century Rome, Palestine, Middle East. There is a new religion trying to form with a lot of forces at work. You've got people who are circumcised and uncircumcised trying to receive the Hebrew tradition. You've got people who are of differing backgrounds and identities and agendas and economic statuses trying to be church together, trying to share everything in common together trying to be in relationship. And it's almost like Paul, before he penned these words in 1 Corinthians 13, had this revelation. We've never had to love like this. We've never had to love each other like this. This is a deeper level of challenge and of testing. But as he sat down to write that letter and he was praying, he felt this flow of love from the Holy Spirit. And because he'd been revealed to the Holy, the, the person of Jesus Christ, the person of Jesus Christ had been revealed to him, he felt these words come to him to not only be absorbed into his heart, but to help a whole community rise to the challenge. Love never fails. And that's when he wrote, love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. We already know the punchline, one, two, three. Love never fails. So how do you see the church, how do you see the love of God active in your life? Active in your church. Active in the world. I saw an extraordinary depiction of the love of God on the internet this week. And so 
with the wonders of worship media technology. God be praised for Mark and Tim back there working their magic, letting it be streamed. Let's give God praise for the way worship media tech has grown throughout these last few years. Um, I want you to take a look at a video. The script in the video will kind of give the background of a depiction of the love of God that does not fail us. ton of bricks when I saw that. I don't know if anyone else was touched by that, but I mean, man. So how many of you have felt like her? Like alone? Like depressed? Discouraged? Disappointed with yourself? And then if you feel free to watch it again because uh, the first thing she experiences is not seeing him. <laughs> she, she hears the pitter-patter of his feet. You can hear it on the video. He's like, boom, boom, boom. He's a big guy, right? So boom, boom. He's running up on her, and then her demeanor absolutely changes. And, I mean, we all need a cousin like that in our lives, right? Um, but then it's not only the cousin, it's the sister probably, it's maybe her significant other, and then the delegation. Are you kidding me? They were all on the way to surround her with love, with encouragement, and to let the lens of God's love be the lens in which she saw herself. I, to me, the cousin is God in this parable. And uh, the others that come along can be the community uh, uh, that, of Christ, right? That recognizes and loves uh, each other as God loves us. So uh, if you could just do a, a closing prayer and meditation with me. Next slide. Next slide. Let's bring our disappointments. We all have them. Let's bring them to God right now. Close your eyes, bow your heads. Think about the pains and disappointments you experienced just in this last week. You're just like uh, Flavia with your head bowed, just owning what you're feeling. And now next slide, but keep your eyes closed everyone. Listen for the footsteps. Listen for that pitter-patter of feet because God is coming to be with you in the way that only God can. And now feel, feel your cousin God embracing you, picking you up with two strong arms and saying, it's okay, you did it. You are a champion. You are loved. You did great. There's a new start and a new era for you right now. Receive God's embrace. And now I invite you to open your eyes. Look around. Look at the delegation that God has gathered together 
to encourage you as you receive the love and grace of God, the love that never fails. Let the church say amen.